Um, what I think we need to keep in mind is that there is no one thing I'm talking about that proves anything. It's the preponderance of evidence, okay? It's looking at everything. If there were just one footprint, if there were just one example of anything I'm giving you, then you could say, well, that's kind of stretching it, or maybe it was fake or whatever. But there are so many of the things that I'm showing you. And I, again, am just touching the tip of the iceberg. Doris Testament from Westport, Washington, 1975, finds this item uh, someplace around her backyard area or something, and she goes, well, that's interesting. This is a piece of a clock and clock parts in solid stone, and the stone is created around the clock. Well, now, what are you going to say? You can look at the stone, you can knock it off, and you can see that this clock part came from someplace around, I think it was some here in Tacoma, as a matter of fact, somebody that manufactured these baby grandfather type clocks and stuff, and here there's this. But you've got stone and created around that. The evolutionist says that it takes hundreds of thousands or millions of years to form this, this uh, stone and fossilize, but it doesn't. You see, it doesn't. Under the right circumstances, you can fossilize and you can harden and case harden objects quick, very, very quick, but under the right circumstances. This is a very, very rare thing, and it's very rare that Dwarf's Testament found it. But here, just an example of the fact we know this is a modern clock piece, but if you didn't know that, you would think that this was something that had been fossilized um, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Metal vase. This has been, this metallic vase was reported in Scientific American June 1851. In solid rock dated millions of years old, this vase was dynamited out of a solid rock. Bell-shaped vessel, composition metal with silver mixed in, six figures on the sides, exquisite casing, carving, and inlaying. This was a base that was absolutely astounding. The artwork and the metallurgy and the time spent and involved was every bit as good as anything you will see in any of the king's and queen's palaces. Here is a picture of it, I think. Come on. There we go. That's the base. This was found in rock that was dated millions of years ago. You're looking at an antediluvian base that is now in one of the museums. It hasn't been destroyed, you see. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at a fact that you have a metallurgy beyond what we can do now. We cannot make an iron hammer that's major component is iron and chlorine. We can't do that, but they did. And they have bases and they have works of art that will rival and be anything that we can do. Their people were already Leonardo da Vinci's, and more so. See, but God said in the Bible, uh, in Genesis 6, verse um, 7, no, yes, in Genesis 6, verse 7, and Genesis 7, verse 23, it says that man was so wicked that God would erase his memory from out of everyone's mind. God meant to destroy almost everything of the antediluvians because of his wickedness. And we're going to talk a little bit about that when we get into this. But he did not take everything. He left us with things and artifacts to look at. This is not out of place. It's out of place if your bias is evolution. If you are a creationist, you say, praise God, look at that. There it is. These people can make and do things. They weren't weird folk who walked around with robes on or something or fig leaves. They were human beings, brilliant, that created and made and built homes and did everything like we did. 
Just like Solomon said, nothing new under the sun. 